So last week I went to go watch the new Quiet Place movie, Quiet Place Day 1, and I'm not gonna lie, it was actually really good. It made an hour and a half feel like about 20 minutes, and for a movie with minimal dialogue, that's pretty impressive, and got me thinking a little bit. What are some other horror movies that made me feel this way? Today I got three movies to share, they're honestly just fun, underrated, and overall just slap. The first movie is the oldest on the list, being released in 1989. But don't be mistaken, because this still holds up as good as the plastic inside. Anyways, what makes this movie really special in my opinion is the fact that they shot this movie entirely in one location, which is pretty rare for a horror movie, especially a slasher. But before I go more in depth with the setting, let's talk about some of the kills. Greg Nicotero, who was a special effects makeup artist of the movie, has worked in some really small movies and shows you've probably never heard of, like The Walking Dead, Scream, Breaking Bad, and he did a really good job bringing the kills to life. The fact that this kill was done in the late 80s is honestly insane to me and it really makes me appreciate Greg Nicotero even more. Besides the kills the filmmaking here from Scott Spiegel kind of makes me want to cream a little bit. The way that he uses almost every single location of the store from the meat cooler, the back area with the baler, the break room, and even the area behind the shelves makes the store feel so much bigger and it makes it even more scary knowing how much empty space there is for the killer to hide. He gets the most out of the store and shoots it in such a nice way that makes it seem so much more dark and scary. The way the shelves are lit almost tease the audience, no ditty, that the killer could be there. This movie also has a great twist at the end, which I honestly didn't expect for some reason, even though it's not even that crazy. Overall, I would say this movie slaps quite a bit. Now, this movie is one that honestly shocked me. I ended up just seeing it on Tubi for free after browsing through the movies, and I thought it looked interesting, so I gave it a shot. Released in 2014, this is a remake of the original Town That Dreaded Sundown that was released in 1976. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't watched the original, so I'm not too sure how this holds up in terms of being a good sequel, but I can definitely judge it as a standalone film, and it's pretty good. The pacing is definitely something that is a little unique, but I honestly really like. Another thing that is great is the kills. They recreated some of the stuff from the original, like the trumpet kill, which is probably the most iconic, but the one that shocked me the most was probably the grandma kill at the gas station. It's really not even that graphic, but what makes it hurt was the fact that she was such a likable character, and how shocking it was seeing her bleed out after seemingly being fine from behind the car. Not only that, but the emotion on her face while realizing what has happened is even more tragic. Another thing I'd like to mention in this movie is the scares. There are honestly a few jump scares that do feel a little cheap, but I honestly don't mind. I mean, the movie that basically jumpstarted the genre had plenty of dumb jump scares, like characters saying hi to each other and Dewey at the front door with the screen mask. So, to me, the jump scares aren't really a problem at all, but I know for some of you it is. With that being said, I think that's all I can say without getting into heavy spoiler territory, so let's get on to the next one. Now, Thanksgiving is my personal favorite movie on the list, and oddly enough, it's the most recent. A lot of movies heavily rely on nostalgia to help secure that cult following, but this isn't the case with this movie at all. When I first heard the news about a Thanksgiving horror movie, the first thing that came to my mind was, how could this movie ever reach the incredibly high standards set by the greatest Thanksgiving movie of all time? And who was the director? Well, one of those questions was answered when Eli Roth was announced pretty early on. I knew who he was from his work directing two pretty solid yet disturbing movies called Hostel and The Grand Inferno. I was cautiously optimistic as to how his work would translate to a movie with a less serious, probably less gory tone, but I gave Thanksgiving a shot and boy it did not disappoint one bit. Coming into this I was kind of concerned about how a cast headlined by Addison Rae and a bunch of people I've never heard of before, but their chemistry was honestly really good and definitely cemented the movie up there in terms of having 
likable slasher side characters. The vibe of the movie is really nice as well. It reminds me of that 90s, 80s slasher atmosphere a lot. But what really does it for me is the killer. The design of John Carver is just so simple yet pretty scary. The one thing that Eli Roth does above all else, if you couldn't tell from Hostile and Green Inferno, is the kills. I wouldn't go as far to say that this movie is the best score out of any slasher I've ever seen, but my favorite kill is probably the trampoline kill. Given the fact that I've been on a trampoline before and you probably have at some point yourself, it makes this kill so much more relatable and painful. Overall, this movie is insanely good, and I would go as far to say that this is on par or on the same tier as the original Scream. That might seem a little bit crazy, but if you watch it, it seriously does slap.